what is your projected revenue for this year as a signing service owner? We're looking at 300,000. It blows my mind. You can 100% do it as well. Another episode of On The Road, Where Are They Now? You might recognize signing agent Derek, or should I now say signing service owner Derek? What's going on, man? Mark, my friend, what's up? You, how are you doing in LSS Nation? We are doing so good. So Derek went from making $10,000 a month to now, what is your projected revenue for this year as a signing service owner? We're looking at 300,000. So you went from $100,000 a year to now $300,000 a year. Yeah. You're earning more revenue, but actually working less because now you're farming out those loan signings. What an incredible last couple of years, man. When I say that back to you and I say, you have a $300,000 a year business. How does that make you feel? It's almost unbelievable. It's hard for me to fathom that. There's a, there was a point in my life where I never thought I would even get to 100,000 a year. And now owning a signing service business where we're knocking on the door of 300,000 just, it blows my mind. We're going to talk about that journey. So I don't know if you've seen these before. This is a newer series of kind of revisiting you signing agents. They were making a lot of money, uh, but we're going to now kind of talk about your mindset growth and your goal okay. changes and your behavior changes to kind of get to where you are. And I know you have way bigger goals of doing $300,000 a year. So yeah. let's dive right into this, man. So that last interview I did with you was in the middle of COVID, right? Yes. Everybody was making a ton of money. You're making right. more money now than you yeah. were when everyone said it's the best time to be a signing agent, I argue the best time to be a signing agent is any time as long as you want to put in the work. So first thing I want to get out here is the mindset, right? So you're making $100,000, $150,000 COVID boom. Life is good, right? Yes. Rates spike, right? We have 100, you're making, your, your signing service isn't quite up and running yet. Rates go up to 6%. Why aren't you panicking? Talk about that mentality because I think people need to hear that like, yes, it's a great time to be a signing agent. And just because some people are screaming from the sidelines, no, it's not. That's just not true. Well, I just had to realize that the real estate industry is always moving forward, no matter what. Mm -hmm. People are always going to be buying, selling, refinance. That doesn't stop. And there might be times that it slows down a little bit, but it never stops. So if the real estate industry is still moving forward, I have to keep moving forward as well. I can't stop and just wait. I can't wait for it to happen. I had to make things happen. So when I looked at that and I said, maybe I might have some days where I have more time. Now I can, instead of just waiting for the market to change, I have to move forward and get and acquire that, all that new business. I love it. So basically what I'm hearing is like, yes, during the boom, like everyone, you're just letting the money roll in. Yeah. Once the money, quote unquote, stopped rolling in, you realize you just had to get back to work, back to yes. basics. And that didn't discourage you because you kind of understood the cyclical nature of every business in America and real estate being the same thing. Exactly. That's exactly right. Rates go up, mortgage applications are down. You would think you'd almost be like, well, maybe I should actually go get another job like some people. But instead, you double down on your business. And now you're going to double your revenue from during the boom. Talk about that mindset and, and kind of the behaviors that needed to get to where you are today. Well, first of all, I want to say this is where Loan Sign System and you, Mark Wills, came into place to introduce me to the idea of running a signing service. When I first started, that never even crossed my mind. When things slowed down, I said, I, I'm going to start. I'm going to start marketing like crazy because at the time I was doing it, if you remember, like six to eight closings a day by myself. And I don't know how much longer I could be doing that. I don't know how, how long, much longer that would be attainable. So I said, I need to leverage my time because I know it's, I knew it was going to be coming back. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be busy again. I knew people were going to be normalizing the market. This is the new interest rates now. And, and this is what we have to be accustomed to. And I knew it would happen. I knew people would realize that's the new normal mm -hmm. and they would be right back into it. I knew it'd be just a, a moment of time where it might get slowed down, but I knew it'd be right back at it where people said, Let's get back into buying and selling and refinancing all over. I knew it would happen again. Well, that's beautiful because they say a lot of business has happened during the recession and that we're not in a recession. But my point is the reason that saying exists is because when you have downtime, you can create infrastructures for whatever the next right. thing is. And so you took advantage of the slow time to create the infrastructure, knowing that rates are going to come back. And so instead of sitting on your hands, you were quietly in the background, like saying, I now actually have the time to create an infrastructure of a signing service. Yes. And so when that, like you said, when the economy catches back up, but these are just the normal new rates, you now have quote unquote, the mass mouse trap built. Am I right. close on that? 
And so what gave you that foresight? Again, I think it goes back to being being mentored uh, by the loan signing system. But also, I just I've just known real estate, just watching real estate, mm-hmm. just watching the market, and it's going to have this the roller coaster of the ups and downs. And I just knew I, I I planted my flag. I planted my flag in the loan industry, in the loan signing industry, and I said. I'm sticking my flag here and I'm going to go with it. I'm going to roll with it and just keep riding this out because I know it's going to be coming back. That was beautiful, man. You planted your flag. You, you did, you knew, you made sure there was no plan B. And I'm guessing that's kind of why, even though interest rates are seven and a half percent right now, you're still not flinching. And in fact, I think you're as busy as you've ever been right now. Am I correct? That's exactly right. We've been so busy. I had had to hire another scheduler to help me out. What I loved is I planted my flag. It's amazing what we can accomplish when there is no plan B. And so I hope everyone's inspired by that watching because I want everyone to plant their flag. The reason I think a lot of businesses, a lot of signing agent businesses don't scale or survive is because they're not planting the flag. They're like, oh, at the first sign of rough waters, they're going back to the old job. They're going back to whatever made them comfortable, whatever they know is safe. You said earlier, you know, like first you're like, oh, I didn't realize like this money was possible. I I want people to see how big a successful signing service owner dreams, goals. You're going to do $300,000 this year, right? So yeah. what is your goals now? Like talk to me about like, where do you see yourself in two years, five years? How big is the signing service? How much revenue are you doing? And, and how has that changed from two years ago when we first did our first interview together? Yeah, I'm looking to scale 350%. You know, we're, we're, I'm looking to be a million dollar signing service. And again, it wasn't an idea that came to me when I first started this. And now I'm like, I can see that happening. I can definitely see that happening. And now I say, okay, this is where I'm at today, 300. I need to make it to a million. Well, there's a gap there that I need to fill monetarily, but also there's a gap there in a production that I need to do. Mm-hmm. That's the question I ask myself. What do I need to do to fill in that gap of production to reach the monetary goal as well? There's a couple of things I want to point out in that, dude. You literally just said, I want to make a million bucks a year with a straight face. Like there was like no doubt. It wasn't this weird lofty goal. It was a very no realistic goal. Like I want to be a million dollar signing service. And you said yeah. it very nonchalantly, not a smile on your face. It was just fact. I hope everybody heard that. And, and that just shows the belief in where you want to go. And that's what makes this great. You know, the second thing that you touched on that I thought was absolutely epic was I have production goals. And so a lot of times signing agents set a goal of 100 grand and they get lost and discouraged all overwhelmed with that number but instead of focusing on the number you're focusing on the actions the efforts and so therefore you're not you're not you're not discouraged or overwhelmed because frankly that's a 70 percent delta you got to make up and, and yes most people would get overwhelmed by that 70 percent delta but you realize that I, to get where I want to go, I got to focus on production. And I hope a lot of signing agents watching this hear that. Because if your goal is 50000 bucks and you're making $10,000 right now, don't get overwhelmed by the 50000 Think about what efforts do I got to make to get to the 50000 It makes it less out, overwhelming, more palpable. Is there anything else you want to share on that? Yeah, I mean, because that also tells me there's a lot of work to do. So I can't, there's, there's no way I can say it's slow. Mm-hmm. I have a huge delta to mm-hmm. fill in now. I, I can never be slow. I have I have a huge gap to fill in now. So I'm I'm always thinking about what's my day? How am I going to be active? How is my marketing? How is my retention? All of that is was going through my mind every day. Gosh, that's so good. Again, I hope everybody heard that. Like I got to focus yeah. on my behaviors to get to fill that seven hundred thousand. You know how many more clients you have to reach out to. You kind of have in your mind, well, I got to get maybe two hundred more clients, whatever the number right. is. And so now you're just working on the behaviors to get to 200 more clients. So there's no time to play poor me. There's no time to be yeah. victim. It's like, I know what I got to do. And that's why I love where are these now? How yeah. much has this, this mindset shift changed from your single signing agent days? You know, it, it makes me think bigger. It makes me look more beyond just myself. It's not just about me anymore. When I first started, it was, it was about me providing for my family. Now it's at a, uh, at a stage now where I'm thinking about my clients. How do I grow their business? How do I not just grow my business, but my client's business as well? How can I show them that I'm here for them? I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, you know, leaving like a lot of other signing agents did or signing services did. I'm here for them for the long run. And I'm going to build this together with them. You know, when you were a signing agent building, you were very self-centric. How much signings can I do? How much money can I make? But I hope everybody heard that transition. And I hope everybody, the early you make this transition from me to we, me to them, 
I actually think the easier the business comes, but I appreciate your vulnerability of that really hitting you. I think a lot of signing agents who are in the building phase, again, it, it's scarcity, right? You you are, come from nothing, like no business is what I should say. And so exactly. it's just build, 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 me, 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 versus flipping that light switch and saying, hey, I make it about them growing their business, they're more loyalty, there's more signings, there's more referrals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly, that's exactly right. I mean, when I first started, the interest rates were where they're at now and I was making 100,000. You know, it, it's just what was normal. Obviously, when COVID hit, the interest rates dropped and we got super slammed, but now they're back to where they were. And it's just, it's back to business as usual uh, for a lot of people. And that's why we don't we don't think about it now. That's why I look, look back and say, who cares about it? Let's just keep going forward. I think it's easy for people to get lost in the numbers because they're always looking for someone or something else to blame than themselves. And this might be a little tough, tough love out there for the LSS yeah. nation, but I know I'm having a conversation with a successful signing service owner who, who's just cementing that like the rates aren't relative to his outcome. No, that just means you're looking for excuses. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the interest rates too much, you're just looking for excuses to bow out. And so I don't, that's why I don't think about it. I, it's not my reason for staying in business. Interest rates are not the reason I'm staying in business. It's me. It's me, the business owner. I'm in control of my business. Wow. I hope everybody, heard, gosh, I love this new series. It, 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 it's funny <laughs> because honestly, you are a different business owner than I talked to two years ago. It's true. And, and it's beautiful, man. It really is. It, it, it is. This business has to be the, the first, second, and third option. And when it is the first, second, and third option, then you start creating behaviors like you to get exactly. to that point, right? What do you feel like the biggest growth change has been from $100,000 Derek working his tail off to $300,000 Derek signing service, farming it out? Like what is, what, what do you, th what do you think of? I definitely had like a scarce scarcity mindset at one point, because again, you know, struggling entrepreneur, trying to make things work. Mm -hmm. And then you got to see, no, there's, there's plenty to go around. I don't have to do all the signings by myself. I can hire other people. I can provide great service to, to my clients. That was, that was something I was also afraid of. Like I was always scared to get fired every day from a client. Like, you know, they, <laughs> we don't want to use you. We want to use somebody else. I was always scared of that too. But I just realized, Hey, I can't control that either. I just realized there's some things that are out of my control, out of my hands. And I can't control that. All I can control is my attitude and activity. So if I just keep thinking, let's keep growing, let's keep building. Sure, maybe when I put my head on the pillow at night, it might hit me a little bit. Yeah. I have to keep going. The next day makes me want to go stronger. I used to look at other notaries or signing agents as competition. Like, this mm -hmm. is my competition. And I don't know if we can, like, how, how close of friends we can be. <laughs> I don't want to tell them all my secrets or, or anything like that. But then I realized... No, I can't be everywhere at the same time. And if I can help them out and they can help me out, we're just helping each other. If we can help each other out and provide great service for all of our clients, we're actually just we're helping our whole industry as signing agents out. It helps right. all of us if we all work together. A rising tide lifts all ships, right? And, it, exactly. and, and so when you're a signing agent who from, operates from scarcity, you're actually not as good of a signing agent. You, you become nervous when you're double checking your docs and you actually end up missing more things. And you, when you go in, you're not as, as natural and as fluid in conversation because you're more scared to lose than you are excited to win. And so when you can uh -huh. flip that, I tell every student, you've got to be more excited to win than you are scared to lose. But that really is the flip from scarcity to abundance, right? Yes. But I love what you said. And I love, again, thank you for being so vulnerable. How did you get out of the scarcity mindset of like, I think you said it a little bit, like it is what it is, but deep dive into that a little bit more. Yeah. I just realized I couldn't control what would happen. Like I, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do the best I can. They're going to get 120% from me. But you know, I, there's, there's things that sometimes come out of our hands, out, out of our control. And I just realized if I can't control these, these things, I can't dwell on them. Mm -hmm. I have to, again, it's just moving forward. Okay, I apologize. I'm, it's a learning experience. First of all, it's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. That means it will never happen again. And we're just going to keep moving forward with it. And we're going to just adapt and pivot what we ever need to do in our business to, to, to provide the best service that we can. The hardest part about being a solopreneur, transferring to an entrepreneur is letting go of control. And so on your journey of really success, it's like you're letting go of control. We're so control freaks to get where we've gotten. Yes. But to really have that abundance mindset, you got to let go a little bit. And letting go a little bit in your case is was like, my 120% is just going to have to be good enough. I am giving them everything I got. 
And, and, and I think that's the maturity. I hope everyone's hearing this. What a great conversation, dude. Is like the key to like abundance of scarcity is really letting go. It's really being like, my good is good enough, right? I'm yeah. the clients that I have are the clients that I have. And that's really the bridge from scarcity to abundant is letting go a little bit, being less of a control freak, which is kind of the opposite of what it takes to be a solopreneur. When you were going from signing, signing agent to signing service owner, what do you believe the most difficult transition was to kind of really get to where you are today? Like what was tough? What was like the hard part? Was it something mental? Was it behavior? What was it? So I want to dig into you a little bit more because this is great. Yeah. It, and it was also part of what you were just saying. It was letting go because I had a hire. Now, now I have employees. So I'm hiring schedulers. And that was something I wasn't used to. It's not only do I have to answer to myself and my wife. Now I have to also answer to an employee. I have to be there for them as well. I have to support them. And, you know, you have to hire the right person and do interviews and train and show them what teach dump all of what's in my brain into their brain and say this is what we have to do and then hire another person and do the same process again so that was a, a big change for me was not only just being the solopreneur but now being an entrepreneur with employees that that i have to serve as well how has that made you a better business owner it's been huge because again you, when you're only thinking about yourself Mm -hmm. it's easy it's easy to just think about yourself but when you're thinking about not just my clients but my staff as well it just makes you more mature again it just makes me more mature i have to learn different people set which also has made me better yeah. a better business owner because i've learned yeah. different people sets i'm with these my schedulers all the time now right. so it just helps me become better and as i've learned it helps me be a better parent as well actually yeah. i want everyone to be you you know and and deborah and bill and that's go from a signing agent to assigning a signing service owner because we can all do it. A real quick shout out with the name of your signing service? Peak Signing. Peak Signing's always looking for the best loan signing system certified signing right. agents. Let's go. How gratifying it is that we help other families put food on their plate. You know, that was something you changed with my mindset. I remember there was a time where I had to write all these checks out and I was like, gosh, I, I brought in all this money, but a lot of it's going out now. And it was something you told me actually that just really changed my mindset. So what if you look at it like, you're not paying signing agents. You're actually helping someone have a great date with their family, mm -hmm. buy you know basketball shoes for their kids' activities, mm -hmm. go on the vacation that they've been they've been dreaming on for years, and now you're able to help support that in some aspect. And that's when they really started putting in my mind like, yes, that's when I started chipping down that scarcity mindset. Like, yes, there's plenty to go around. There's plenty for me. There's plenty for you. There's plenty for everyone to go around. And we're just again, we're helping. Every, I'm helping everyone out, and that was. That was huge for me to look at it in that different aspect. But instead of money going out, it was money to support and provide for others. It's crazy how my effort of marketing, my effort helps somebody else. And, and, and to me, that's the best part of being a signing service owner. It's like, you know, I, I've gotten emails from, from notaries saying, look, the thousand bucks I made from this year paid for Christmas, right? Yes. So, I mean, that's a really cool feeling. And so I, you know, that's one of that's my favorite part of being a signing service owner is the amount of other humans I can impact from my efforts. And I'll do that all day. And, you know, people go, well, why do you still have a signing service? Loan signing system so big. It's because I still want to be able to help other people. And if my efforts can help someone put 90 bucks in their pocket and they, they, they cause they're super busy and they don't have time to market direct and they need my efforts to help them. Like that's the best part, man. I mean, being a signing service owner is is probably one of the most rewarding businesses uh in america because you're really helping multiple families not just one right and, and i say this because i want everyone watching this to be inspired by derek like you can be a signing agent and then go on to be a signing service owner so it's not just about the money and working less and, and making your more more time efficient and being with your family yes that's all great but the amount of lives that we impact is absolutely epic let me uh kind of wrap up with this. You know, when someone's trying to transition from being a signing agent to a signing service owner, kind of looking back at your journey, what is a piece of advice or, or something that you wish you would have done different to help somebody watching this right now who's thinking about taking that jump? You're more of a servant. Mm. You know, you're, you're serving a lot of people. It's not, we, we always want to look at the signers that are buying, refinancing, selling their home. We always look to them. We have to realize, yes, we are serving them, but we're serving everyone in the transaction. We have to remember, we're, all, we're also serving the real estate agent, the lender, the title company or, or, or attorney. And again, it's the notaries that we hire. We're also serving them too. We're, mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a, like a the division. 
And I want everyone to know that we, we should all be on the same page. Mm -hmm. We're all, and that is to serve. We're in the service industry. Love and that was something I forgot for a while. And when I went back to that, remembering I'm in the service industry, I'm here to be a servant to others in what I can provide. And that has really changed my outlook on business. Earlier, you said, you know, you, you, you want to have a million dollar company. Yeah. So I have two questions about that. Cause some people here just think that number is crazy. Like, why, why would you say that? A, that's like <laughs> impossible. You can't make a million dollars or people are going to be like, you have 700,000 more to go. So I have a two part question to that. Cause I, I want people to get into the mindset. I think it's very helpful yeah. is a, how has it benefited you to dream bigger? If you can answer that. And then also what was the most difficult part about allowing yourself to dream bigger? So my first conference was 2021 in Las Vegas. And you had this big banister up there that said, write your goals on it. And I just threw up there a million dollar signing service. Because that's when I first started thinking about having a signing service was at that conference. That conference really opened up a lot of my mind and vision. But I did throw it up there. And part of it was also just an idea that came up to me. But I didn't put the action behind it. Because what you just said, I just, I, I would think... That is so far out there though. That is so like, I'm just barely over a hundred thousand. Like that is, that is out there. I had to put belief in myself and I had, you know, I had to talk to my wife a lot and, and say, is this something you think I could do? Can I do this? I, I had to look for outside support to, to encourage me. I couldn't, I couldn't do it alone. And sometimes I think what it was, was when I kept think, thinking of that goal two years ago, it was just something in the back of my mind, but because I did think it was so far out there, I just thought, why put in the effort? Because it wasn't going to be attainable. Mm. But then I had to realize, yes, it is attainable because I've seen others do it. And if other people can do it, that means I can do it. And that means I have to put in the work to do it. And then that's when the belief started coming. It was seeing the other people, you bringing people on stage, me being around them and seeing that they can, they've done it and thinking, yeah, I I can do that too. Why? What makes them more different than me? There's not a whole lot different. I can do that too. I can definitely do that too. And that's when the real action started coming to place. And that's when, that's when I said, yes, it, there's no, there's no question in my mind. It will happen. Okay. I mean, thank you for saying that. That was so eloquent and amazing. I want people to hear that self doubt doesn't go away just because you make a hundred grand. And that's the vulnerability of that answer. So thank you yeah. again. And, and, and so what I'm trying to inspire the person watching this is like, if you're at 500 bucks a month and you find it so difficult to get to 10, Dan goes at, at 100 and thousand possibly get to a million. You're not alone in that right. self-doubt. You're not alone in the challenge. But I love what you said at the end. If, I, if someone else can do it, so can I. So if yeah. you're watching this right now, Derek can do it. You can do it. Melina, can, you can do it. Bill can do it. Irene can do it. So you can do it too. 100%. And so I, I love how we're going to end on this because a lot of you guys have these goals written on your, on your, on your sticky on your wall right now. And you're like, I want to make 5,000 bucks a month. And party is like, I can't do it. I know I, I want to put out there, but I can't. But Derek said it best, man. Like you just got to, when someone else can do it, that's proof to you that you can do it because exactly. like you said, what do they, what do they have that I don't? Nothing. Right. I, what do they have that I don't? Nothing. I want everybody to hear that. And so if you're watching this right now, you can build this business to whatever your goals are. And so thank you, thank you. Thank you for so much for being vulnerable in that moment because the self-doubt creeps in every step of the way. It does. And, 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 and you're not, and if you're having self-doubt right now, watching this, you're not alone. Derek had it at a hundred thousand dollars. It's not like, oh, son, you make a hundred grand. All of a sudden you're the most confident person in the world. It always is there. But the difference yeah. is I, what I loved about what you said, and I hope someone gets inspired by this is I realized I had to put in the work, right? They're not better than me, but I just got to get to work. Exactly. Any last words just to inspire the, 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 the nation, inspire a, a notary, I let you take the final words. Cause it's been nothing but a great conversation. Oh, thank you. Like I said, if someone else has done it, you can do it. Fear, questioning, doubt creeps in my mind every single day. But I just have to break that barrier and say, no one else is going to do it but me. No one else is going to do it but you. You can 100% do it as well. Wow, DVO, peak signing, CEO, founder, president, servant, yes. servant, uh, uh, husband, father, amazing friend, um, ambassador of Utah. Um, just want to say thank you, brother. No, thank you and thank the nation as well. I appreciate everybody.
All right, man. And so until next time, this is uh, Where Are They Now? Go, let's go, my dude! Oh.